Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Ank, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the Python standard library and modules. Okay, so let's begin. First off, let me tell you what the standard library is. The standard library is a collection or a library of pre-written functions. These are functions that come with Python that you don't have to write the code for yourself. Now, some of these functions are built into the interpreter, and you may be familiar with them already. For example, the print function, the input function, the float function, format function, right? These are already available to you in the interpreter just by writing some code, right? So the rest of the functions, and there are many, 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 many functions, tons, the library of functions that comes with Python is ginormous. Okay, so the rest of those functions are written in files that are called modules, right? So the library is made up of a bunch of files called modules, and in those modules, there are all of these pre-written functions. Okay, so if you wanna access those functions, you have to identify the module that has the functions that uh, you're interested in, and then at the top of your Python program, you have to use the import keyword and you have to uh, write a statement that looks something like this, right? Uh, import math, right? So one of the modules is named the math module and inside of it, it has a bunch of useful uh, function definitions related to math, right? Functions like cosine, sine, finding the floor, etc. Okay, so once you've imported that module, then the functions can be call, called looking something like this, or with a statement that looks something like this, right? X equals math dot floor, and we passed an argument 3.275. So floor is one of the functions in the math module, and so you include the name of the module, and then you have this dot operator, and then the name of the function that you want to use. Now, a full list of modules in the library can be found at this link here, docs.python.org forward slash three forward slash pi dash mod index dot html. Um, you know, the list of modules is huge. The list of functions is huge, right? I won't have, there's no way I could cover even a tenth of them all in, in one video, right? So feel free to stop by there and browse through the list and just become familiar with what's there, right? So. Finally, we can create our own custom modules, right? So we can write our own functions, we can put those functions in their own files, right? And those files make up our own module, right? If you create enough modules, you can create your own custom Python library, okay? So uh, in this video, we'll go through and we'll see some examples of this, right? I'll show you how to access the library using import, give you some examples, and we'll write our own custom module. Okay, so here I am on Python's website, and this is a list of all of the modules that are available in the library, right? So as I was saying, it's huge, right? And so each one of these links leads to a page that describes all of the functions that are available in that module, right? So for the example program I'll write for you, I'm gonna introduce you to the math module, right? So I clicked on M at the index up there. And you can see there's the math link. And so if I click on this, you can see that there's a description of the module here at the top, but also there's just a list of all of the different functions that are defined in here and what they do, how they basically work, right? So you can see that there's a ton of uh, functions that are available, right? So there's trigonometric functions, there's angular conversion functions, hyperbolic functions, I mean, just tons of stuff, different constants, right? Just tons of stuff that um, is available for you, right? So you've got all this stuff you can use and you didn't have to write any of it. Okay, so let's look at an example program. And in this program, I'll show you how to use uh, some of these functions, right? So I just picked 
three functions um, at random. You know, just that looked interesting to me. So square root, uh, floor, and signed. Um, and then also, you know, how about a constant, right? So pi. So this is the constant representation of pi, right? So we'll go ahead and use each one of these things just to give you a feel for how this whole process works, right? So if I want to access any of those guys, you know, again, they're not built into the interpreter. So you have to import the module in which they are defined. So that'll give us access to everything in the math module, okay? And so now, if I want to use those functions, I can go ahead and use them. Um, I just have to say, you know, math dot square root, for example, right? So let's say that I wanted to find the square root of some value. So let's say I want to find the square root of 81, right? So then I can just say math dot square root of 81. And then I'll go ahead and print what it returns to show it to you on the screen. There you go, there's nine, right? Now, uh, floor of X, that returns the largest integer that's less than or equal to X. So what does that mean? Well, I mean, if, if, if I had math.floor um, 7.2, right? So what that's gonna do is that's gonna return seven, right? So I'll go ahead and print that out for you, right? So there's the seven, as I was saying. You know, if you wanna find the sign of a number, Right, so sin of x returns the sine of x in radians. So I might have something like x equals math dot sine of uh, 30, right? And I'll print out the x for you, okay? So there's the sine of 30 in radians, negative 0 0.9880, blah, 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 etc. Right, now if I wanted a value for pi, that was an estimation and I didn't, I don't have to remember it or, or maybe I want something a little bit more accurate than what I remember than what I've memorized well then I can use math.pi right so let's say that I wanted to find the area of um, circle or something like that right so area of a circle is what pi r squared so math times pi times I need some value for the radius so I don't know let's say 3.0 so math times um, math up pi times r squared, right? So maybe something like that, right? Um, and then I'll print out that area for you. Okay. So there's the area, 28.27, blah, 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 blah. So there's way more um, functions than just these, right? And, and there's more constants than just pi inside of the math module, right? So this is just one example of, you know, the many modules that are available. And these are just, you know, a collection of functions uh, that are available in a constant, right? So this is generally though, how you go about using um, modules in the library and accessing the functions that are defined in that module. Now, not only can we use the modules that come with Python in the library, but we can create our own modules, right? So let me define a few different functions here. So let us say that I wanted some functions that found the area of some shapes, right? So maybe um, find area of a triangle, right? So we would need the base and the height, and so I would return 0.5 times base times height, right? So that'd be one of the functions. Uh, find the area of a square, right? So we're passing at the side and we're returning, you know, side squared and maybe you know, find the area of a rectangle, right? So we would need the length and the width. Okay, so we would return length times width, right? Now, <coughs> I'll go ahead and I'll define a main function here and I'll run each of these uh, functions, right? Just to test them. So, you know, maybe my program would ask the user for, you know, base and height and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, my program just needs these functions and so I'm testing them, right? So let's see here. So I'll say try 
find equals find area triangle, base is three, height is two, uh, square, find area square, and the sides would be five, uh, and then rectangle, right? Find area rectangle. So maybe the length of width is, I don't know, six and three, right? So I'll print out what those things return just for testing purposes. Okay. So I got a program right now that is going to be able to, right? I got these functions, find area triangle, square, rectangle, etc. So got these three functions defined, right? Now I can move all these functions into their own module, right? So that way, any other programs that need to use these functions can import the module in which they're defined and then use them. Similar to how the library works, right? So how am I gonna make that happen? All right, so the way that's gonna work is you go into your directory where um, you're gonna have your source code file. So my modules right here .py, that is the uh, source code file, oops, excuse me, right, for the program that I just wrote. Okay, so I wanna move these guys into their own module. So I'll go ahead and I'll create um, a new file and I'll move all these guys over to that new file, okay? And then I'll save that file in the same location and I'll call these, um, or this, this file, uh, shapes.py, okay? So shapes.py has now got the three functions defined in it. And so what I've just done is I've just created my own custom module, right? So these three functions are defined in there. And so now it's time for me to go back to my original source code file and use those functions in my own module. Right, so you can see shapes.py is the module. My modules.py is the program that I want to use those shape functions in. Right, so let's go back to that source code file. Right, and we're going to import shapes. Okay, so just like we did with the standard library, so we import shapes now. Try, squa, and rec, right? They are functions, or excuse me, <laughs> sorry. Find area triangle, find area square, find area rectangle. Those are defined in shapes, right? So I have to modify my code to take that into consideration. So shapes.findAreaTriangle, shapes.findAreaSquare, and shapes.findAreaRectangle, right? So let's save that and rerun it. Okay, so you can see the exact same output, right? So shapes.findAreaTriangles, shapes.findAreaSquares, shapes.findAreaRectangle, those functions are each now defined in module shapes, right? So module shapes, which is defined inside of, or module shapes has got the definitions for all those functions, right? So there they are, right? So this is now my custom module, which I called shapes.py. Okay, so the interpreter is going to look for, you know, the shapes file here in the same location as the source code file, unless you do some more advanced stuff, which is kind of beyond the, the, the scope of this video. But let me show you one more thing here. Now, since find area triangle is defined inside the shapes, right? And we've wrote out shapes.find area triangle. Well, then that tells us use find area triangle defined inside the shapes, right? But we can still name another function within the same source code file, um, the same thing, right? Now, if I do that, and I don't know, maybe I'll just print high or something, just want to show you this detail, right? There's two different functions named find area triangle. Which one gets called? Well, that's what this 
shapes dot is going to help figure out. So shapes dot find area triangle is referring to the find area triangle function in the shapes module. And if I just called find area triangle you know, up here without that shapes dot, go ahead and run it, you can see the high there. So without shapes dot, you're using the local version of that function. The function defined inside of the source code, inside of your program source code file itself, rather than the one defined in the module. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.